Alright. Alright, I have a Asus G74SX, so let's see how this goes. Alrighty. So you can click import, that's fine. Or you can take one of your footage, like, say, I'll do this one. Just drag it on the timeline, and then it'll cache it. Basically, what this does right here is it makes the video easier to play back on your computer. Like, not all of us have a, you know, $2,000 computer that can render and export <laughs> with no trouble at all. Some of us are, like me, in the past, using older computers that couldn't play it unless it was cached. And uh, what's really cool is if you go here to processing, or no, environment, and you can click permanent, and what that'll do is it'll store it on your computer permanently. And then if you notice that you need space, just press delete the saved files, and it'll delete whatever's in there. This, once you reboot, it'll delete the cache. So make sure you choose permanent. And for processing, I don't touch any of these. And transition, definitely want to change that to like 500 image. Five seconds, we'll do three. And then general. Um, enable autosave. Yeah, I mean, why not? I do that. Alright, so it's caching, and this will take longer on some computers. I'm using a pretty fast one and it needs to be refreshed. Well, we just wait. I haven't used AVS in a while. I use Adobe Premiere, so Adobe Premiere is crazy. Like, we'll do this one that I did today. And, uh, yeah, this just gets insane. Like, you can take this and move it over. Yeah, it just gets insane. Okay, so, if I can learn how to do this. Or drag this somewhere and I don't know I'm just I'm a nerd I'm a nut so I, I would take this and then that way I can see where the audio begins and ends because you can't expand this and make this bigger like I'll show you what I'm talking about with this I can take it and Make the audio bar smaller and bigger so I can see when there's audio and when there isn't. But you can't do that with this one. So that's kind of a big thing. You press the trim button. Or I think you just press C. Okay, I gotta. F Obviously, I need to figure this out. All right, I haven't used this in a while. There was a button that made it cut. Huh. Oh boy, now I feel like an idiot. Where... Video effect, transitions... Okay. <laughs> How do I do this? I forgot. You don't use that one. Like, you can press, like, C. Or X. It's one of the keys.
All right, sorry about that. It's been a while since I used this. You click this, and then you take it, and you click right here, and then you can take this, and you can move it around, and you can even like, uh, oh goodness, properties, no. You take it, and you drag the video down here, and you can click uh, edit overlay. And then you can move the overlay right here, and you can resize it. So it's like a picture in picture effect. And like we'll play it. Yeah. You get the idea. And then like you just take these little parts, you can zoom in on the audio. Like that's obviously way big. If I can remember how to slowly zoom out. I think you, there we go. Just click somewhere right here, and then just drag it to the left to zoom out, and drag it to the right to zoom in. And then trim, trim, and then delete. And it's magnetic, so anytime you delete something, it automatically, like if you don't want this part right here, just press delete, and it deletes it out of there. I don't ever hit that button. I don't know why I was trying to hit that at first. Then when you're done, you press produce. And this is something you have to play with. You've got to figure out how it works out for you. Like, I'll do file, and what I did before was I took a screenshot of how it turned out. What worked the best for me was MPEG, and then, like, advanced. You just got to play with it, really. I mean, if you're recording in 1920 by 1080, you choose that. If you're using, you know, whatever re resolution you're using is that. And here you want to match the frame rate of the camera. So, like, if we take this video that I did right here, um, we we'll go to details. It tells us right here. It was at 23 frames per second. It was about, I would say, data total. I would keep it about 33. So, change this to 23976 and make this like, you know, 37999. And then the audio, uh, you can leave those alone. Those are fine. But that's how I do it. And then just press next. Choose where you want it like your desktop browse desktop okay and then I like to choose close application when it's done and then press create and depending on how fast your computer is it'll take a little while so that's how you use AVS and just like I said you gotta play with it you've gotta figure out what settings you wanna export it in I'm, I'm recording. Hold on. Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. Like, if you choose MPEG and you have it all nice and set up the way you want it, like, if we change this to 37999, you can press the little save button and go, uh, if I recorded this using my Canon 300 or ELF 300, anytime I use that camera, I can just press MPEG and I can load the preset right here so all my options um, like are from that camera which of course it does 1080 and it does 23976 so then we would save it and do Canon 300 and anytime we went to export a video that we recorded with that camera all the, the presets done everything's already there for you you don't have to go in here each and every time and change all these settings you just want to match the bitrate and the frames and the frame size with what your camera did and MPEG this right here always worked the best for me out of any other ones so just keep that in mind just MPEG works the best for me yeah that's about it um, I literally used AVS for a full year so I know it very well I'm kinda rough because I haven't used it in a long time but there you go I tell you use AVS